Well, good morning and uh, welcome to another, another Memphis Monday. Memphis Monday 127. Tell you what, I got a friend who's really interested in uh, horse, uh, horse race betting and all that stuff, goes to the track and all that stuff. Well, I'm going to kind of make him a gag prize today. I'm going to make him a 100% wooden uh, computer to figure out the winners of a horse race. Um, my goal is to, uh, once I design and build this thing today, I'm going to actually try it on uh, some race results and see how good it works. And my plan is to uh, show that as a preview. I know that's pretty optimistic. So we got a lot to do, and we're not going to get any of it done unless we do what? That's right. Let's knock off the chit chat, come up with a plan, and get to work. Well, I came up with a plan, and the plan uh, calls for uh, putting a series of dados in this uh, piece of oak uh, plank we made a few weeks ago, and. Once I get that done, then I'll show you what uh, I came up with on this computer. And these are, uh, these are some holes that are going to be holding dowel pins. And uh, I really need to have these in place before I can show you the design. Okay, here's the concept. I don't know if this will make sense to you if you had... If you didn't see uh, yesterday's video, but I got these little uh, dados cut in uh, to the base here, and that receives these little scales. This is the software for the uh, for the computer, and these these scales they can be anything you want. You can have them logarithmic, you can have them progressive, you can have them big, you can have them small. Uh, you can put any numbers you want on them. Um, and plus you can you can evaluate any criteria that you want. The horse's speed, uh, the, um, the odds, uh, the class rating, uh, whatever uh, you know, whatever category you want. And how it works yeah, I'll, I'll show you here. So I made up this notional scale here, and here's our horse. You put the scale right even with the horse there, and then let's say this, this scale here is for the uh, horse's power rating. You just slide, uh, slide the horse up until it meets his power rating and that's his position then you can take it take the scale and you move on to the next horse and evaluate the next horse okay uh, let me, let's uh, let's do some finish work on this thing and uh, do some assembly going to hold this thing on with uh, with screws but what I'm doing here is just uh, firing a couple of uh, brads into the end piece here just to hold it in place while I pre-drill 
for the screws. I'm going to be uh, attaching these end, end boards with uh, screws and I wanted to show you the difference uh, in screws. I'm going to be using these brass screws here and the difference between these uh, is a, actually is a steel screw here it's just coated but it's a fake uh, brass screw. Um, the these brass screws or these real screws have a are tapered they're much they're much much thicker up here at the top than they are down here on the threads and the threads taper too see they go they start big at the top and they keep, keep getting smaller but that's not so this is a deck screw here see how the deck screw the shank the top up here is the same as the threads and same with the drywall screw which is the reason that drywall screws are famous for being weak is you know there's just not very much meat to them especially up here at the top whereas these screws have a lot of meat as a matter of fact, they get stronger and stronger as you get up towards the head. Now, one of the drawbacks of these um, uh, these brass screws or fake brass screws and stainless steel screws is the heads will gnarl out real easy. So you got to be really careful. Whereas these deck screws and drywall screws. For some reason, they make the heads uh, much more durable. Uh, these are, are good for about one a one-time use, but you can't just keep taking them, uh, putting them in, and taking them out because that uh, slot, the slot in the end, is very weak. Okay, with that in mind, when you drill for these, when you drill here for these screws. You got to be uh, mindful that the top up here is much wider, is has a bigger diameter than the threads, and so often you have to uh, drill two holes, one for the top of the screw and one for the threads. Okay, first hole I'll be. Uh, I'm only going to put two in here. Now, I've, I've got the countersink in there, and now I have another drill bit that's, the drill bit is actually bigger than the threads, but I need to, I need to have some room for the shank, so I'll be putting the second hole in here. Okay, then I'm going to drill it, I'm going to try to put it in without messing the threads up. Okay, I'm gonna have to get a bigger drill. Okay, what's happening is I'm I'm drilling this I'm drilling this thing in, but when it gets down to the end down there, it, it won't it won't fit in that uh, smaller hole. So, I'm going to use this bigger drill bit. See if it'll work. Okay, these uh, dowels, you know, I don't know how they make these. I think they run through a die. Uh, but they're not always perfectly sized and they're not always perfectly round. Uh, this one, for example, well, none of them actually fit real well in these holes, which are exactly half an inch. I even wallowed them out a little bit. So to fix that, 
This is what's called a tenon, a tenon cutter. I use it in chair making. Uh, you just slide that thing on there. And that and that buffs it up, uh, sizes it, and puts it in round. So now it will fit in there perfectly. I want it tight, but I don't, I don't want to have to pound it in there either. So let's check this one. Well, a little too tight. Take my tendon cutter. And uh, you can also use this uh, tool here for uh, to cut um, plugs. This one is uh, really big. I, it, I can't even get it started in one of these holes. So this is quite a bit bigger here. Let's uh, see how this tenon cutter handles it. Perfect. Now I'll thread our little uh, racehorses on here. The uh, everything's just a press fit. I'm not using any glue. Because there's just a possibility that uh, our design won't be perfect. Well, there she is. I didn't put any finishing on it yet because I'm going to test it. Um, and my plan is to, uh, I'm going to test it right after we finish this video. And then I'm going to publish, uh, I'm going to publish that uh, test, an explanation of how it works and all that stuff in more detail, um, as a preview uh, to this uh, to this uh, Memphis Monday uh, 127. There it is, the uh, horse racing uh, Ouija. It is. It's a 100% wooden computer used to uh, select the winners of uh, race horse, uh, race horse racing. Uh, you probably noticed that I spelled Ouija, W-E-G-I. Uh, if you Google that, you'll, uh, that's not how you spell it. You spell it O-U-I-J-A and pronounce it Ouija. Uh, but anyway, uh, I'm going to put a link in, uh, I'm going to put a link, link in the description to yesterday's video and I'm going to get into the details of how you program this thing and how you pick winners to, to race horses, uh, to races. And if you're seeing this video now, it means that it must have worked, uh, at least to some degree, uh, or I wouldn't have mentioned it. So anyway, like and favorite and uh, all the stuff you do on the internet. Uh, this is pretty, uh, pretty uh, silly project, but you know, you know, if you're doing this. Uh, uh, for recreation, you know, you got to have some fun, huh? Okay, so like and favorite and Facebook and tweet and all the stuff you do on the internet. But most, most important, make sure you're back here next week for another horse racing Ouija kind of event. No, actually, we're going to be building something good. So get excited and see you next week. Thanks for playing along.